Hello everyone, this is Steve Herman, author of Mediumship Mastery, The Ultimate Guide, and I'm going to be talking today a little bit more about mediumship development, uh, specifically mediumship and alcohol or other substances. And it's interesting because I can remember many decades ago, this is over 30 years ago, I remember sitting in this one group, it was on a Friday night, <clears throat> I didn't run this class, <clears throat> my teacher Pauline Hathaway, wonderful medium, was facilitating it. And we would start the class around 7 o'clock, and after the discussion, we would have <clears throat> a meditation during which people would practice bringing through spirit communications. It, it was awesome, and the energy was, I was pretty fantastic. It was a open group. Consequently, it shifted around a bit. But anyway, I remember this one night, there's this one particular guy. I, I love this guy. He, 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 he was a very, very, very psychic, very, very, very open to spirit. And just, just a great guy to be around. And he showed up late. We had actually already started the meditation. The lights were off. And Pauline, my teacher, had not locked the door. She hadn't closed or locked it here in the spiritualist church. So what happened? Right in the middle of the meditation, right before we got to the section where we were going to go around and people would share their impressions and people would open up and start to be able to give spirit communications, who do you think showed up? That particular gentleman. And he came in, sat down in a seat. Now, where do you think he had been? Well, he had, after work, gone right to happy hour at a local bar, which just so happened to be right before the class started. And then he came right to class. He was completely drunk out of his mind, and he was in. He was always open to the spirit world, but he was even more open because of the alcohol. Of course, because when, when, you, when someone does drink, what happens? It, it, it opens them up a bit. You know, their analytical mind is able to get out of the way as they're in a more relaxed mood, so to speak. So all sorts of communications were coming to him, and, he, and, he, and through him, and he, he was very disruptive that evening. I remember he would get up, go to the bathroom, come back, go into the kitchen, get a a glass of water, come back, sit down, get up. I mean, he was breaking every rule of protocol within that particular group that had been established. And Pauline, who was facilitating the, the, the group, didn't do anything about it. But at the end, she did let him have it. Now, sometimes you hear people say, my gosh, you don't want to drink alcohol and you don't want to mix it in with mediumship, do you? Well, what do you think? <clears throat> you know, if we go back historically... Actually, even the Fox sisters had problems with alcohol caused by all the stress and just their own lack of personal discipline. Many prominent mediums were alcoholics. John Slater, very, very, very well-known medium. If we go back into the 1920s and before in the United States, fantastic evidential in terms of the clairvoyant communications that would come through. He, he, he had a problem with alcohol. Now, from what I understand, at Onset, Massachusetts, an early spiritualist camp, Lilydale, New York, San Francisco, he would drink alcohol, sometimes even before he'd work. I guess it would mellow him out a little bit before he'd do the communications. Arthur Ford, world famous as a medium, fantastic, clairaudient, able to hear spirit. He also had an issue with alcohol. Of course, if we get into alcohol addiction, and we talk about helping people to become sober, we know that Bill and Bob, who were involved in founding the Alcoholics Anonymous organization, the AA organization, they were in Chicago, were very much involved in the study of spiritualism. So a lot of those principles were influenced by the spirit world. But we have to ask ourselves, is it a good thing to mix booze with spirit communication. And of course, if we're talking about mediumship, it, it's scientific. It all takes place according to having the right types of conditions. And those conditions, well, a lot of the conditions involved with any spirit communications are very much dependent, of course, upon the medium, what the medium brings into it, as well as the sitters or the participant or participants of the particular situation. And we know that vibrations connecting, when you're, when you're talking about mental mediumship, it's telepathic mind-to-mind -mind communication. 
So if you have people who are drunk out of their mind or even just slightly intoxicated, do you think that that's the best kind of energy to work with? Now, in one sense, it loosens people up. And I can think of over the years, having worked with thousands, literally thousands of people here in the physical world, bringing through communications, I've had several times over the years someone show up who was a bit intoxicated. And somehow, you know, I ended up working with them, perhaps not realizing it initially. Because in a general sense, when I work with someone, I want the energy to be the right way. I want my energy to be the right way. Like attracts like. And we want to work with these higher types of energies. Well, we want it to the best of our ability, disciplined our mind. And we want our minds to be clear. We want our minds to be uh, very clean in terms of the communications that can come through. Now, so I don't drink alcohol. I've never drunk a beer in my life <clears throat> and have no interest, never smoked pot in my life, things like this. Uh, because I want, to, I want to be clean. I, I, I always have since I was very young when I learned how to meditate and got involved uh, in terms of my own development. But it's one of these things where we're, we're working with spirits. And of, of course, the higher spirits, if they really need to, it doesn't matter how dense, it doesn't matter how polluted, it doesn't matter how depraved or just unfavorable the conditions might be, if there's a higher purpose, they can extend the effort and get through and touch in with people, whether it's to provide personal guidance or whether it's to actually work and bring through some type of communications through a medium. So it's, it, it's, it's quite interesting the way this type of work <clears throat> takes place. And <clears throat> of course, if, if we're talking about building the right types of conditions, what do we want? We want to create a harmonious, loving environment, which is of a high vibration. So I think if anyone walks into a bar, if they walk into a nightclub, some physical plane establishment where people are intoxicated or drinking, is that really the best atmosphere to do mediumship. And recently, I, I've just noticed this, there's quite a few mediums and they're doing these public demonstrations or private demonstrations. And where are they taking place? They're taking place in liquor shops, wine shops. You know, you go in there, you get your own glass of wine, and you get the spirit message as part of it. You, know, you pay the 40 bucks, the 80 bucks, the $20, whatever is being charged. And is that really the best type of atmosphere to work? Spirit communication, in, in one sense, is entertaining. I mean, people go there. They want to be entertained. But really, what we're doing with mediumship, there has to be some type of reverence for the process which is taking place because it's actually operating on a much higher type of level. And the, the, the higher personalities in spirit, they go, grow to, go through great efforts to communicate with us. So would I want to do a public demonstration of mediumship in some type of bar? No, I wouldn't. I, I think it's really important to have reverence for the act of mediumship for the process of mediumship, for what's actually taking place. And well, how you portray it. The average person out there, they don't necessarily know anything about it. So they would go through to something like that. But drinking alcohol, it just isn't the right type of vibration to work with. Now, it, it might loosen people up, and it seems like it's a very happy vibration to work with. But it's really not what it's about. I mean, if we, if we talk about really development of mediumship and working with higher phases of mediumship, higher levels of communication, we have to learn how to work with energy in a constructive way, which is going to build the power up, which is going to enhance the vibrations. So your own purity, your own clean state of mind, and if someone's drunk out of their mind, well, it's not going to work. Granted, if everyone's just 
sipping wine. Not everyone's necessarily going to be intoxicated. Some might just have a slight buzz. And hopefully they won't drive home afterwards if they're too buzzed, because then you'll probably end up having to bring them through later on. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of mediums that might not see there being any type of problem with doing that. But what we're doing is connecting people with God. We're connecting people with the higher spiritual planes, with personalities in the spirit world, to help people with their own soul type of growth. It's not, it's not something which should be frivolous or, or, or done, in, in, in my view at least, in, in some type of shallow or superficial type of level. There, there has to be reverence for what's taking place. So um, there used to be, if we go back into the 19th century, um, among spiritualists, they would call it a promiscuous circle. And, and it had nothing to do with sexuality. It, it had to do with just anybody showing up for the circle at any time, just opening up. You know, we're going to sit. could be, you know, two in the morning. People are drunk out of their minds. We're going to have a circle. We're going to communicate. Well, that's not really the best time to do it, is it? You want the conditions to be the right way. It's all scientific. You want the results to be favorable. You want to represent the spirit world in a way which is dignified, in a way which really is conveying higher spirituality and truth. And of course, if you're, you're talking about spirituality, it's not something which is rigid or uptight. You know, we're, we're here in this material world, and I, I know mediums who... You know, they're, they're, they're pe people are, pe are, are individuals. That they, they're human. They may drink. I, I, I know mediums who partake in cannabis. And I'll tell you, would I want to have a mediumship demonstration in a cannabis house? You know, some type of store where they sell marijuana. Everyone gets their joint. You know, we'll, we'll, I'll give readings to them all. No, I wouldn't. Marijuana is legal in California where, where I reside and in a lot of other states now, which is a very good thing. But the, the point is, it's not the right type of atmosphere to work. And, and it really just puts out the wrong type of message. It's, it's, this, is, this is it's not something which is superficial. We're just going to have a, <laughs> let's go to the bar and drink. I remember this one lady, she went to some medium in the UK, and the guy was drinking a beer during the session. He had the open can. That's just not the right type of atmosphere to work. I mean, that's actually one of the first things I learned. I mean, just going to basic mediumistic development classes years ago. You know, you don't want to drink. You don't want to take drugs, at least in the context of when you're working. And you certainly don't want people who have partaked of those substances going to for a session, ideally. It's just not the best way to go about doing it. So that's just something to think about. Mediumship is something which is, is wonderful. You, you can help people with it. You can reach people, not just showing to them in theoretical terms, presenting the idea of life after death, but you can actually, through bringing through communications, you can demonstrate the reality of the survival of the personality after the destruction of the physical body. And that's fantastic. You can bring through healing for people and help them. But we don't want to put the spirit world in a box. Like I say, they can work with you under any conditions. And yes, you can go into some, the sleaziest nightclub in Manhattan or London or wherever you might be, and you could bring through the spirit world for people there while they're drunk out of their minds. Why not? <laughs> but I'll just tell you this. It's not really the best way to go about doing it. You know, we, we, we think about uh, Arthur Ford, I know that Albert Best, who was a wonderful Scottish medium, from what I've been told by people who knew him, he also had, 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 had issues with, with drinking. Pe pe people are human. But in terms of actually having circles or having demonstrations where that's going on, that's not the way you want to be doing it. It's something to really think about. You know, you want to master mediumship. You have to master yourself. You have to work with the conditions. When you work with the conditions, you can go past the levels that you're on. And we can all go to a higher level. And as we go to higher levels, those in the world of the Spirit can work through us to help people here in a far more 
significant manner. So I hope that this gives you some ideas to think about. You know, please feel free to disagree. Feel free to add your comments and please subscribe if, if you like what I've been saying, or even if you don't like it, subscribe to my channel. Check out my book, Mediumship Mastery. It's used as a textbook for mediumship worldwide. It's very good, lots of exercises, very good for people running groups, and whether you're a novice or very experienced as a medium, it's definitely something that will help you in terms of your own development. So thank you all very much, and God bless each and every one of you.